Rhodiola rosea. Jameson here with some more information about the brain performance adaptogen. Now I gave it that name, but there's a good reason as to why I did. Rhodiola rosea has multiple different benefits in different realms, but I'm going to focus on the focus and concentration. I'm going to focus on the focus of the rhodiola rosea. First thing that I can relate to the most with rhodiola is stress and anxiety and the role that that plays in my own personal life. If I don't have enough stress or I don't have enough anxiety for something, then I become bored. I don't have action. I don't work towards a goal. I don't feel like there's a need to accomplish something. And if I'm overstressed and over anxious that I don't do anything because I'm so afraid of what is going to actually happen. Rhodiola has this amazing effect where you can increase your stress resilience. What that means is that you will be able to have more stress and be able to manage that stress instead of being overwhelmed by a smaller amount of stress. And that's the important thing about stress is that it's never necessary to be constantly stressed. It's like inflammation. You don't want to be constantly inflamed, but after you exercise or if you need to recover or if you get hurt, your body is going to send the inflammation trigger to that area to help fix it, to help it get better. But it's only temporary. It's going to be cyclical versus chronic. Chronic anything is usually detrimental to your health. So chronic stress is no different. With this comes a decrease in anger and confusion. Those are two things that a lot of people have a very dire time with. You get right into your emotions. You go in right into anger mode. You go into frustration mode or you get upset. You get mad because you don't understand something. Rhodiola helps with this. Neuropeptide Y decreases blood pressure and increases relaxation. It gives you that smooth, clear head. It gives you that action mindset where you're not in a reactive state, but you're not in a lazy state. You're observing and you're able to react upon what is happening right in front of you and without letting your emotions take over your thought process. There's also the ability to increase your protein content of your 5-HT1A receptor. This actually helps increase your social ability and helps you be more motivated to create community, to be able to have less stress and anxiety when you're around people, when you're socializing, when you're able to connect and network and create with fellow like-minded individuals. There's also an energy boost side. So the increase of the protein content of the 5-HT1A receptor actually works with your serotonin production. It stimulates your serotonin production, which will also benef benefit your energy levels and your ability to take action versus your desire to not take action due to laziness or to be overwhelmed and to be afraid to take action. You're also gonna get a epinephrine, dopamine, and a cortisol effect with rhodiola rosea. This is through monoamine oxidase inhibitors. MAOs decrease the breakdown of these neurotransmitters. So when you are feeling epinephrine, like your adrenaline, your desire to do something, dopamine, feeling good, cortisol, waking you up, getting you motivated, and you have your stress managed, which gives you more stimulation to get things done, which allows your body to balance and optimize those neurotransmitters. Rhodiola not only has the effects that help your stress and anxiety and help with your energy levels by decreasing your fatigue, it has a full adaptogenic effect. And now this full adaptogenic effect not only goes into how you feel, but also there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that's pretty interesting with Rhodiola. There's some studies showing that there's a reduction in inflammation. There's some studies showing that it actually improves your exercise performance and also decreases belly fat. And there's also a couple studies on heart health and the anti-aging and the antioxidant effects and benefits that come with rhodiola. And now rhodiola is broken down into rosavins and salidricides. Now there's over 140 chemical compounds within rhodiola, but these are the two big ones. Rosavins have more of a feel-good effect and salidricides are more neuroprotective and help battle fatigue. So overall, rhodiola rosea, let me know if you've taken it before. It's just grown in the tundras, you know, it's grown up in the mountains. It's like any good adaptogenic herb up there. It's actually one of the top three adaptogenic herbs. And I've personally been taking mine now for about three weeks. I've been taking anywhere from 250 to 350 milligrams of it per day. But 
The cool thing about this is that you don't need to cycle it. So there's a bit of a bell curve here. So if you're taking rhodiola and you're taking a certain amount, it only has an effect in a certain dose range. So if you take too much of it, it's not gonna have much of an effect. If you take too little, it's not gonna have much of an effect. It ranges around 80 milligrams to about 680 milligrams of rhodiola. So there's a very large range of where the effect comes into play. If you have any questions and you wanna learn more about rhodiola, I call it road hediola just because I think I'm funny, but rhodiola is nothing to be messed around with. It's not a laughing matter. This is serious. This is a serious adaptogen. Drop it, comment, drop some information down below. Let me know if you've taken rhodiola, what your experiences have been with rhodiola. And I'm excited to hear some more insights from some fellow rhodiola enthusiasts.